days ago, I watched a young news anchor on one of the local television stations announce the death of General Eli Tumine with what I felt was, was the casualness of an ordinary story, one that is quickly eclipsed by other oncoming events. But part of me felt perhaps we have come to terms with death of those who we love in order that we can take the shock out of its news. But somehow an unsettling feeling took hold of me moments later. In my heart, I felt and I knew that this was not an ordinary death. It was a symbolic, iconic representation of the passing away of a generation who some of us hold as symbols of the big shift, the huge shift that restored our country on the path to progress. Whatever opinion the opponents of these people hold about them, Tumine in particular held a brightly lit torch for that generation that is passing on. Now to wake up in the morning and know he's no more is to say an era has ended. There was a time when death took the NRA with a rapidity a few years after the victory and takeover of 1986, that we even thought, some of us who were younger at that time, we thought no one would live to tell the story of the Bush War heroes. So Patrick Lumumba, Stanley Mohanji, Munsha Hedek, or Karampenge, I think they used to call him, another name, another uh, uh, title, Napoleon Utambika, Kamwana Mwana, Ronald Bata, who had been a medical doctor they picked in Nakaseke, Jet Mwebaze, Benon Tumkunde, Frank Guma, Marius Katunji, who used to call suicide, Tadeo Kanyankore, Akanga Vyaruhanga. It's like an honor roll I'm reading. All these people passed away in successive order. Not in that one, two, three, four, but they passed away with rapidity. Now, I thought then that the country would probably not retain any element of these men and women to write for the young generation about a Uganda which they encountered in the 70s and 80s, a Uganda that changed their destiny, that a Uganda which inadvertently turned them into soldiers that they were not meant to be. They wanted to live an ordinary life as doctors, as, as teachers, like General Tumwin, an art teacher, but this was transformed rapidly by a Uganda they faced. And then God gave us a respite. Perhaps that respite was for some of the survivors to write. The people who wrote like General Pekos Kutesa, their account makes a good script of a, a wonderful thriller. But since 2015, we have witnessed a resurgence of the enemy of death in this hero's camp, starting with General Ronda Nyakeiruma in September 2015, Taban Chavhende in 2017, Stephen Ruavantu, Pekos Kutesa, both in August 2021, and now a year later, El Tumine, they are all gone. Now in the ancient Middle Eastern tradition of tending sheep, a shepherd brought his flock into an enclosure for the night. But instead of putting a door at the entrance, he would turn himself into the very door by lying at the entrance of the kraal to protect his flock from wild animals. Thieves or any danger that he faced, he made himself a sacrifice for his sheep's survival. This is the practice that Jesus mentioned in the Gospels when he makes reference to the owner of the sheep who does not run away from danger. In many ways, the life of a soldier or soldiering as a, a profession presents life in this manner. Because often a soldier will give up his own life so that other people can enjoy theirs. This crop of the NRA fighters that I speak of, whose exemplary act of sacrifice and devotion as young people then in the 70s and 80s, people that Tumwine has been a symbol of in the last 42 years, they stand a shoulder above many in the history of our country. Tumwine reminds me of all other things of the 1830s French Revolutionary Wars, a painter at that time, his name was Eugene Delacroix. He said, and I quote, if I haven't fought for my country, at least I will paint for it. Now only that's Tumine, 
did not just paint, but he or fight, but he adroitly and beautifully combined both fighting and painting. And he did it all with grace. He did it with energy. He did it with humility that he would even break into song and dance and abandon all manner of pretense at protocols and military titles so that he could reveal his true creative spirit and talent. He did this sometimes with a rebellious and contrarian streak in what he used to say was freedom from social Western European constrictions about dress, about food, about customs, things that come with education. He did this so that he could create a fresh from his culture experience, which was very rich, and from his heart. His shirts, his shoes, were unique in design and material, as if to give all of us a message, to say, live life as who you are created to be. You have nothing to fear or to lose, perhaps only your self-loathing spirit. Like many deeply reflective leaders in military and political history, starting with Oliver Cromwell in Britain, Napoleon Bonaparte in France, Mao Zedong in China, Fidel Castro in Cuba, Samora Machel in Mozambique, Thomas Sankara in, in Burkina Faso, Yoweri Museven in Uganda. Like them, Tumine was steeped in the romantic tradition of painting, of singing, of writing, of composing, and he had an eye for the study of nature, an eye for art, an eye for design. He had an eye for all that straddles the space between human creative spirit and a shallow prevalent culture. That's the space he traversed. By doing so, General Tumine equipped many of us with new ways to see and communicate our world. He taught us with his actions both in, in and out of uniform to cultivate a particular level of conviction in order to live life fully, to stand against the shallowness of passing fads that come with a rapidly changing country. He taught us to balance thoughtfulness with the impulsiveness and the impetuosity of youth. He taught us to be ridiculously courageous with risk while maintaining patience that life will turn out well against all adversity in the end. Most importantly, most importantly, he taught us to think outside the box, to imagine things that are not as though they are, and that if you can think it, you can create it. Now for me personally, two moments stand out with General Tumine. I remember very clearly it was late in the evening of on September 20th, 2015. It is the day we buried his comrade, General Aronda Nyakeirma. But it was also 24 hours after I had been, without notice, removed from the leadership contest of the NRM in the West. We bumped into each other at a green and white painted fuel station. Those of you who travel on that road to Kabale, there's a green and white painted petrol station that lies astride the intersection of the road going to Rukunjiri and one that continues Kabale town, just outside Ntungamo city. I had stopped to refuel and Tumine and his security detail were right across buying food and drinks in an adjacent minimat. He walked over to me and holding me and pulling me by the hand, we walked across the paved yard at that gas station to a little quiet place way out of the view of other station users. He asked me in what I saw was a surprised mood and tone. He asked me what had happened to my bid the previous night. To which I said, I had no idea, given I had also just heard from the news while I was teaching in Ushenyi on the morning of September 19th, 2015. He paused and asked if I needed help to speak to the gentleman that I had run against or to speak to any leader in the party, to which I said there was no need, given a decision was made without letting me know why, and it meant my case was sealed, and as a disciplined person, I said, I will carry it. Without saying much, Tumine left for his car, but I watched his countenance betray his feelings. I never got to ask him about this again, but he seemed to me that that day, as someone 
going through emotions and concerned about an injustice done on one individual. Now I had known him for many years, but that moment left an incredibly curious thought about who this man was at the core. He was a man who hated injustice, whether it was against an individual or a community or a country. The second moment was in January 2020 in the trek from Galamba here in Uruero to Virembo in the new district of Kakumiro. I watched him and General Stephen Kashaka, Julius Chihanda, Pekos Kutesa, and some of the surviving NRA officers. I watched them on this trek surround their commander in chief as the days gone by in the bush. They often pushed off the president's bodyguards. They stood tall with him, surrounding him. They took questions. They answered questions on his behalf. There is a beautiful picture that is kept in my mind. I took it with a cell phone, but it's kept in my mind. So on my cell phone, I thought to myself, I will probably never see this moment again. These men standing together, speaking together, walking through the places that they traversed when they were young. Fate is a strange thing. It has a way to fulfill some things. Two of those men, Pecos and Eli, have departed in a span of one year. There are no more to listen to or watch how Uganda will turn out in the next 20, 30 years. We will miss General Tumine and all his colleagues that have died, gone home over the years. But we must never give up on the teaching. We must never give up on the practice of those ideals they stood for. Even if circumstances have changed, even if some people make some of these principles that people died for, they make them a matter of bread and butter. They make them a thing for use in jostling for positions of influence. It pains us that they wrestle these around for power and resources. They trivialize the incredible example of chivalry, of selflessness, of service beyond self. Above all, the biggest sacrifice was made by the people of Bulemezi, the people of Bururi, the people of Singo, the people of Bunyoro, whose homes and lives were shattered so that all of us, all of us as a country, can reclaim what we lost in the constitutional crisis of 1966. It is to those people and their children and their children's children that we must rededicate ourselves in order to strengthen the culture of tolerance, to help build an economy that will guarantee jobs for them and provide education that will help them compete in this very difficult world. Tumwine leaves us in transition. Transitions are normal in life. Like all good things that must be protected and nurtured, there is a contention for the values of the movement, a very deep contention on whether what we have learned and believed in the last 42 years from these founders will survive to the next generation. God keep his soul in peace and God keep his family in the tradition of sacrifice and chivalry.